<clears throat> Alright you guys, what's going on man? Welcome back to another King James video. It's been a minute since we kind of did a video here at the setup, but uh, what I want to talk about today is going to be around the topic of film cameras and how you can get the most pretty much out of any film camera. Um, this is going to be a video for beginner film photographers, but maybe also some of the advanced shooters out there. Um, and we're going to be talking about the other variables other than the camera that kind of play a huge part in getting good results when shooting film. You know, you don't need an expensive camera whatsoever when you're shooting film to get really good quality results. And matter of fact, it's probably the most least negligible kind of variable in terms of getting good results with film photography. So I'm going to be covering pretty much all of the other aspects today with five different tips that you guys can utilize to get good results with any film camera of your choice. But before we get started, you guys, go ahead and grab some snacks, grab some water, grab your camera, um, and let's sit down and let's talk about the other variables on how you can get the most out of any film camera. Let's go. All right, so as we mentioned in the intro, you guys, the camera really only plays such a small factor when it comes to getting good results on film. And kind of the reason behind that is because film cameras, essentially, if you look at them all, they all serve the same purpose. They are just a box that opens up to let light to expose the film. It's kind of, you know, opposite from what a digital camera is nowadays where the sensors in each camera are different. Because on film, we're all using, you know, 35 millimeter film. Of course, cameras will have different feature sets that will make shooting either, you know, more comfortable or a lot easier. But a cheap camera like this one right here, the IQ Zoom point and shoots can get just as good results, if not better than some of the higher end cameras as long as some of the other variables are covered. Whether you're shooting with a cheaper point and shoot camera like this one or shooting some of these nicer, you know, 35 millimeter SLR camera bodies, uh, the, the camera bodies itself don't really matter too much. So let's jump into the very first variable, you guys. So now that we kind of know that the camera body is just a light box that exposes the film that we all love and shoot, um, the first real variable in making sharper images, that is, is to have a good quality lens. This goes for any SLR or rangefinder camera, any interchangeable, you know, lens camera body that you may own. Just know that the lens is going to be far more important than the camera body. Um, and this is huge because with film cameras, of course, you're going to have some of the lower end, you know, for example, Nikon bodies. And then you're going to have some of the higher end Nikons like the F3 or even like the FM2. But they all really take the same glass. And so if you want to spend more on the lens uh, rather than the camera body itself and get like a cheaper, you know, Nikon F body, like a FG, for example, for about $25, $30, you could spend more on a better lens that's going to give you much sharper images. The same lenses that I can put on my Nikon F3 will fit onto the FG. And if I have sharper glass in front of my film plane, regardless of what camera body I'm shooting, I'm always going to have sharper images. So that is the first variable, you guys. It doesn't really matter what camera you have. And this is also kind of like a hack as well. Spend more on the lens than on the camera body because for the most part, all film camera bodies realistically are all the same. This is going to be the quintessential upgrade if you are shooting film right now to your camera. Upgrade your lens to a higher quality lens that is going to give you sharper images. Now with that said, the camera bodies are always going to play a role in how the images come out. But not in the bodies itself, more so on how well the camera can meter the scene in front of it. Now, when you look at any type of film, you know, photograph, whether that be medium format or just 35 millimeter, your results, your colors, your, you know, all of the different variables that go into, you know, what a photograph looks like, all comes down to metering. And so the next tip that I have for you guys is to always meter correctly. And this is huge. Whether your camera has a light meter built in or not, always meter correctly. When you meter your scenes correctly, you're gonna get better overall looking photographs. Your images are gonna come out 
nicely exposed. You're gonna get nice colors, you're gonna get nice saturation, and that all really comes down to the metering. Opposed to, you know, let's say you have a super expensive camera like a Leica, but you don't meter correctly, you're gonna get maybe overexposed photographs with blown out highlights or just really dark shadows and um, underexposed images that's gonna have a ton of uh, unpleasant grain. And so always meter correctly, you know, that's really the second biggest variable to making photographs. Maybe it's the first uh, metering correctly. Now, if your camera has a built-in light meter, First, go ahead and shoot a couple rolls, test its accuracy. Um, but if you don't have a built-in light meter, my next tip would be to get something that is external. Whether that be like external light meters like this one, this is the Kex light meter right here and it sits on top of the hot shoe. This doesn't need to be on top of the Leica, folks. You can have this pretty much on any camera. Um, or if you don't want to you know, spend money on a handheld light meter or a light meter like this one on top, you can always download light meter apps on your phone, which is going to be better than nothing, but not the greatest, I would say. But bottom line, you guys, you want to always meter correctly. That's how you're going to get very good exposed photographs, and that's how the film is going to shine at its best. You meter correctly, you're going to get good results all around. And you pair that with a sharp lens, you got it. So now that we kind of covered metering and also making sharp images with sharper lenses, uh, the next real step would be using good quality film. Uh, this is something that is not a huge variable because for the most part, any film that you use metered correctly is going to give you good results. But what I will say is certain films are going to give you certain looks. And if you were trying to go for a certain look, like maybe for example, you want to shoot portraits, there are a couple of film stocks that I would stray away from, and there are some that I would probably lean more towards uh, for you know different genres and different scenarios. And so the third tip is you guys, use good quality films that match your style of shooting. Think of it like using the right tool for the right job. You know, you're not gonna use a hammer to try to get that small Allen key screw out from under the freaking hood of the car. You're gonna want a nice Allen key wrench to get that out. And it's the same thing as with film you're not gonna wanna use a film stock that makes somebody's skin looks red and orange. Uh, and you wanna use something, for example, like Portra 400 or maybe even Fuji 400H for more of that neutral color tones and good skin tones. So my suggestion would be to try out different film stocks, uh, see which ones work for you. I made a video a while back talking about my five must try 35 millimeter films. And if you guys wanna check that out, I would highly recommend you do. Um, if you are new to film photography, of course, but that is the next kind of tip, you guys. Use the right film stocks for the right scenarios um, and uh, just don't use Ektar for portraits. <laughs> now, in terms of variables that will affect the overall image quality at the end of the day, those are the main three that I would focus on. Now, the fourth tip that I wanna share with you guys is more based off of the user themselves. And that really is, you guys, getting comfortable with your camera and learning everything about it. Whether you have a $5 camera from the thrift store or a $3,000 Leica camera, it's very important that you know everything about your camera. Um, and you really wanna master it because when it comes to shooting film photography, we don't really have a second chance to know whether or not our images look good or not. We don't have a preview. Uh, we don't have a screen on the back to know, you know what these images look like. We only get to see our results after we pay to get our film developed or if you develop it your own. And so with that said, you want to minimize all of the risk of kind of things that can go wrong when shooting film. And one of the best ways to do that is to learn your camera inside out. So you know that if there are, you know, any unique perks to your camera, like having a Canon AE-1 with a shutter squeak, know if that shutter kind of, you know, delays the the uh, the shutter a little bit because sometimes it does and you may need to compensate for that. Or, you know, maybe you just have a perfectly working camera like the X700, for example, but you don't know how to use the exposure compensation dial. Um, it's, you know, so these smaller details that we tend to neglect because we are very excited about shooting film that can contribute, unfortunately, to bad exposures and bad results. And so the more you know about your camera, the more confident you will be to operate it. And overall, you're gonna get much better results knowing what you're doing with your camera than being blindly just shooting on program mode. Another thing that I wanna mention as well is to you know educate yourself more on manual exposure. Uh, this is not you know really the next tip, but it's something that I feel is worth mentioning. 
a very good basic way to start with that is through Sunny 16. Learning Sunny 16 is going to take you such a long way um, when making film photographs because you can make better judgment on exposures and maybe just better guesses when you're not completely sure, you know, whether to shoot this, for example, at like f8 or f6. Um, when you find yourself in those scenarios and you know more about exposures and how, you know, your film camera is going to react to it, you're going to get far, far better results. Um, and this is kind of more of an advanced step, but I did make a Sunny 16 video. Check it out if you haven't already. Learn Sunny 16, learn more about exposure. You're going to get far, far better images, whether you're shooting manual or in program or aperture priority. And the last tip that I have for you guys is very, very simple. And it's pretty much just to maintain your cameras regularly, whether that means cleaning your lens or taking out the dust inside, or maybe even just replacing the batteries. You wanna maintain your camera so that it works nicely every single time you go out to shoot. Um, and if your camera has, you know, anything that needs to be repaired, see if it, you know, is worth it first of all to get it repaired. Because a lot of the times it's not, it's, you're probably just better off finding another camera, the same camera I, sh I should say, and just purchasing a new one. But if it is a camera that maybe has more sentimental value or if it's a more expensive camera, it could be worth repairing. Maintaining your camera doesn't always need to be, you know, getting it sealed every five months. It could also just be some of the smaller things like cleaning it, or as we mentioned earlier, you know, cleaning the dust off the front of the glass. Just like you would maintain your car so that it could take you to different places, you wanna maintain your camera so that it could keep making you photographs. And when you combine all five of the tips that we used today, having a clean camera, upgrading to a sharp lens, metering correctly every single time and using the right film stock for the right jobs you're going to get far far better results than worrying about the different camera bodies that you could possibly buy use these five tips to get better results with your camera and i guarantee you you are going to be far far better off with this video so thank you guys so much man for tuning into this episode i don't know if you guys noticed but we have a new lens on this camera it's much much wider than it was before um, and on top of that, you guys, I want to kind of turn the mic over to you and just ask you if you guys have any tips that maybe somebody like me can use or some of the other viewers here um, watching alongside you. What are some things that you can use or practice to get better results from any film camera? Um, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. So be sure to comment down below really quick and subscribe for more film photography related videos. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode as always. Middle to gain. Whew.